Hey guys, it's Chris. Once again, we're here with my glasses. We're here with my Amiga 2000 number four. And I previously, you saw that uh, we did the uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero to the Denise adapter for the HDMI, RPI to HDMI as it's called. So right now we're rocking the old uh, Chinesium SCART to DB23. And we're just gonna fire it up on this. I'm gonna give you a base comparison to what we got today. But this time, we're gonna be installing this. This came, I got it off eBay, the whole thing, 80 bucks uh, shipped. It was from a seller in Sweden, Sweden. And this is the Raspberry Pi to HDMI for the Amiga 2000. This is the V2, so it comes with the Denise or Super Denise uh, slot or jumper. It also has the the double button thing for the thing that I don't own for the the button to choose the on-screen options. But by default, it's set in NTSC, which is what I am, and it has the same Pi Zero micro HDMI out. So we will be using the adapter, the Amiga, as we left off, eight megs of RAM and one mega chip. Um, stock NTSC OCS Denise and it looks pretty good a uh, little bit of screen weirdness here on the end with a little that happens and uh, let's get it apart well I'm not gonna bore you with the removal of the case again so I don't actually have to take the whole thing apart I only need to remove the base itself because we're going right here on the graphics slot so with the five screws removed, here we are on the 2000 side, and it just fits right in here. I don't even have the, oh my god, the backing plate, and you can see how well it sits if you're worried about clearance. There is plenty of room here on the side. Uh, the SD card has already been flashed. It is off of the normal GitHub link where you download it, Copper Dragons. We're just going to use a standard micro HDMI to HDMI and we're just going to plug it right into the monitor, I guess. HDMI from the monitor here, we're going to plug in. Now, this is not the ideal solution because you'd want a small ribbon cable to a 3D printed bracket out the back. But for testing purposes, we can do this. Plug this in, like so. Now, this could be some kind of ghetto mastery and you could go around and I'm not really worried about aesthetics at this point. Just so you know, I'm not running this. I will take it out. I'll just set it right here and it's just out of the way. So we're pure HDMI. So here we go and powering on. There it is. There we go. Crystal clear. Now I can't do anything focus wise with this camera because this camera just sucks donkeys. Uh, you'll notice there is a massive screen around here. It's crystal clear, but I should be able to use the overscan tools. Oh, I forgot. This is stock 68,000. We're going to go into overscan and we're going to see if we can make this bigger. And this is as big as she gets. That's just this monitor. There's really a uh, not a lot I can do. I can't even get this over. So, yep. Save it. Just kind of moved a little bit. I got a little bit right here now. That's kind of goofy. So that isn't, it's clear. It is clear, but it's not as good as the, this box it works. Let's see if the second boot is any faster on the graphics display, being that the Pi has been booted. One thing I do notice is this card in here. Make sure it's straight. Yeah, it came up beforehand this time. It's booting thinking about it on its 7 megahertz itself but this card here it sits literally you know no shielding right here it will tilt just a little bit so just be cautious and make sure that you line it straight up now I'm sure I could do some button stuff and maybe fill the screen but it is in its native 4x3 type mode so if I was to run, let's say Directory Works, one of my favorite go-tos. Dang it, Virus Z, get out of here. Run Directory Works, cheap file manager. It's really clear and looks great. This is a 15 kilohertz program. We all know the stupid system. Oops, can, only it's on here. 
So Sinfo, this is the older one, 324, fine, ECS, Agnes, NTSC, high res, standard to the 68,000 in junk. I'm not even going to bother with it. It's not like it's getting any speed. I do have the Kickstart uh, 314 ROM in here, as you can see. But it's crystal clear. It's running. So upon a reboot, we're going to do the double mouse button salute. And you will still get the pre-boot screen with your, your other ROM if I made it in time. I don't know if I did. Yeah. So the Pi will boot, and you'll have all of your functional regular things that are available. Let's put it in PAL. I mean... And boot, let's see what happens. We'll boot it in PAL mode. Well, that's one of the pre crack tro loaders of Pinball Fantasies. Extra, whoa, look at that. So that's an issue. It's like I can't get the sync correctly. 1920 by 1250 50 hertz, so it did do PAL. 7 megahertz and floppy drives. Can you ask for a more authentic experience? If you have epilepsy, please stop watching this video. So right now, Chinesium adapter SCART DB23 is better. It doesn't give me any crap. We're going to double mouse button because I want to make sure I'm in NTSC mode. So that's a that's an issue. If you boot this in the PAL, the Pi is set for NTSC. Amiga, 60 hertz. I went in here and said display options PAL. So we're going to boot it in NTSC mode. And this is an NTSC. You can use the button thing and program this and save it for 50 hertz for you guys over in the old Eurozone. Or if you just want a PAL Amiga here in the, in the States, you can set that. Some people run their stuff in PAL. Now this looks okay. Interesting. I guess the trainer was in PAL. I don't know. But HDMI is HDMI is HDMI, whether you're 60 or 50. Ooh. That sounds interesting. Press one or two. One. Capture the ghost. Collect the keys. Save the city. Some interesting sounds on the disc. Kind of interesting. Press fire to start. Whoa. I know you gotta walk across this little thing right here. And die. I'm like dying like mad. I suck. And I'm dead. So that's why I don't play games, but it works. Um, like I said, if you wanted some other functionality for 50 hertz, if you're a PAL machine, uh, when you do your Raspberry Pi, hook up your button and you can blast through the settings. Yeah, thanks, Ghostbusters. You can blast through the settings on board. Okay. You can blast through the settings on board and it will let you adjust yours to 50 hertz. By default the code is currently in 60 hertz NTSC and it works fine. Let's actually try a power off. Don't know, that's what I grab. R-Type, R-Type. We have R-Type 2 also. Great shooter. What does that say? Click. Unlimited lives. Sounds good. Doing the correct, it's showing you the whole screen. Nice and crystal clear. It looks really good. Now we are loading off a of floppy, and this is stock 7 megahertz, 1 meg chip Amiga. So think of this like a naked 500 with a belly slot expansion. Yep, that's me. Oh, this joystick needs some work. Oh, dang it. No, get it. And I just. I'm not a good gamer. I just run right into the right into the floor. I'm blaming the joystick on this one. And died. It's very simple. Make sure it's pulled over. Maybe stick a piece of cardboard behind here for some safety gap. Just for any risk of shock. A piece of paper would do, or a piece of printer paper, a couple sheets, whatever. Just something. Maybe a cardboard cutout. If you can get a 3D printed bracket, I'm um, looking for some of the STL files. I really haven't seen any that are uh, out yet. A couple of our uh, group members have designed them and they're selling them with their own kits. But I got this one with the Raspberry Pi Zero on eBay, about 80 bucks. Depending on where you are, uh, the person who sells them, at least who I bought them from, is in Sweden. But everything's cool. It works very well. And for what I'm using it for, it's, it's fine. I think it would look better on a regular 4x3 monitor, how it does the 
uh, how it does the system. I've gone ahead and plugged this adapter back in. I'm going to turn this off for a second because I don't want to blow anything up. I'm leaving this plugged in, but it's right here. You know what it just looked like a second ago. We're going to plug back up the old Chinesium SCART, and you can also take your audio and plug it in too. There we go. I had to remove the board. I could not run both. It kept trying to do the HDMI thing. It would not shoot it out the back for the DB23. So there's the original, the same disc, and you can see Enter Game is here. And we'll let it load, and we'll see how this looks. And that's our type in the SCART to HDMI. It looks pretty good itself. I mean, if you don't mind the extra cabling, I prefer this method. These, these are wonderful, and the one for the the other 500s, and there's the R type. So the ones for the five, six, two thousand, even I did. You know, you saw the previous video, and of course the the video slot board for the two thousand. They're wonderful. It gives you an HDMI solution for a modern device, but preferably, I actually enjoy the DB23. Uh, RGB video and upscaled through this HDMI box it does quite well and it actually fills the entire screen and this is the slowest loading game ever still loading dude oh my god I just suck eggs oh my god oh I stink Whoop. What do I prefer? Like I said, I enjoy the $23 SCART to HDMI. Now, $23 is for this box. I did spend another $11 or $12 on Amiga Kit and got this cable. It was off of eBay, but it's still off of Amiga Kit. So you can go to their store or a lot of the other Amiga retailers. Amiga on the Lake, iComp, I think, sells them. Um, Amiga sort of EU. Uh, Sorden, like there's so many places. If I didn't mention your store, I'm sorry, but there's so many places that sell these cables. <clears throat> so let's say 50 bucks. 50 bucks, you're getting these. I'm seeing these boards alone on eBay now. Now this cost me 20 bucks, 18 dollars in parts from Mauser. Uh, 30 minutes of my time. I had a socket already. I had a header. So the chips and the build sheet off of the GitHub let's say 20 bucks and a half hour of my time. If you're not familiar with soldering, you can pick these up on eBay. I don't know. I th I've seen them for like 50, 60 bucks for this. Now that's a great solution if you want to internal everything for your Amiga. But if you don't mind having some cables that are behind the back anyway, this is the way to go still for me. Um, yeah, people might complain about the... But I'm still getting cut off, see? But I'm getting the full screen of my monitor, minus a little bit on the left and a little bit on the right. And... When I reboot into a workbench environment, I'm actually getting the complete widescreen, and it, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a 35-year-old computer and OS. I mean, it's okay if it's not 100%. You want that? Go buy a 1084. I got one right down there, and this blows it away. 1084 on interlace mode, you know what that looks like. It's like you have astigmatism all day long. For me, it's going to be this, because I don't have to keep taking my Amigas apart. Um, for you, it's it's up to you. I'm just here to show you the options. Anything that I get and have problems with, if there's an issue, uh, the one thing I did notice, like you saw earlier, if you do boot into PAL and your your box doesn't have the button on there where you can flip it to PAL, you're going to get the epilepsy mode. So as you can see, now I have to redo my overscan because I, I did it for the Pi. Thank you. Okay. And save. That'll scooter on up. And there we go. I can then go into my monitor options and slide this puppy over to get that off. Sometimes you can even go into an auto adjustment, but you can just not look over on that side. And for the most, you're not going to be using this 24-7 anyway, so you can just enjoy it. So that's all I got for now. So I hope this helps you in your decision for what's current in 2021 for some additional display options for your various Amigas. And thank you for watching, and as always... I hope you learned something.